Repairing an Adirondack Chair for a Hunt Camp William Hovey Smith, 2020 Warning! Now those of you who are really fine craftsmen and furniture builders, uh, don't watch this one. <laughs> no, uh, this is a re expedient repair for Hunt Camp. This is Hovey Smith, the Backyard Sportsman. We are actually restoring a Hunt Camp that has been basically abandoned for about four years. See my video, Last Man Standing in Hunt Camp, to find out how I mowed the hunt trails and hunted this camp by myself. And replacing some of the furniture. Hence, this Adirondack chair that you see. Now, there are fine and fabulous hunt camps in Georgia. I mean, you can go and you can climb up on stands that are built up on telephone poles. And this is like being in your living room. And when a great big buck walks out there in front of you, uh, you put your coffee down and you peer up and say, yeah, well, maybe I'll take that one. Uh, and the guys go out and get your deer and drag it back and dress it and you take it and package it and go home. And that's your hunt. Well, we don't hunt like that. Uh, our hunt camp is very much a do-it-yourself business. Uh, we hunt typically from climbing stands, although I have some ground blinds too. And uh, we drag back our own deer and we mostly process it. And we salvage our furniture. And that's what this is. This is out of the Dempster dumpster. Literally. Well, Somebody is obviously moving. They didn't want to take a big old thing like this away, particularly as it was already broken in places and had been for an awful long time. And so I am repairing it. Now I replaced the slat here and it's coated here with spar varnish and I'm going to put a finishing coat to match this. And we also have another broken slat here. Now what I'm replacing it with is very old wood. By old, I mean 150 years old. Uh, this was a piece of old fat Georgia pine. Well, it's also rot resistant. I'm going to use it to replace these slats. Now, What's a thing like this worth? When I pulled it out of the dumpster, broken in the back as it was, and uh, I'd say, well, if you put it up at a yard sale, uh, $20, probably uh, you could take it away for that, I imagine. And when I get through with it, guess what? It's going to be worth $30. Yeah. Well, that's not terrible much of an increase. But, it will give years of service out at the hunt camp. And uh, no sweat about that. The best of these types of chairs were made out of American white cedar. And this cedar is lightweight and rot resistant. So you could pick it up and move it better than you could say uh, one out of this heart pine or other stuff. So, uh, this one, is it white cedar? Eh, I don't know. I think it's more like northern white pine. But at any rate, uh, we're going to repair it, and we're going to take it out there and use it. And we expect to get many years of use out of it, particularly if it's stored indoors. And it collapses down to a smaller size, so you can conveniently store it. This is one of the collapsible versions of the Adirondack chairs. It also has a back you can move back and forward and so on. So in design, it's good. In construction, eh, only fair. But, but count. Yep, it'll do. I'm an author, and I have some 20 books. Uh, many of these are outdoor titles. But I also have a significant business book, and that's Create Your Own Job Security. 
In this book, I advocate that you start your own businesses anytime, anywhere, at any age, when you need to raise a little money, like perhaps right now, and tell you exactly how to select what that appropriate business ought to be. Now, my adventure project right now is a novel, screenplay, and movie for all the other groups. And I am well along with this. And we have, in fact, uh, built a gun, a 1777 replica French 69 caliber musket that we're hunting with this year. And uh, that is going to be featured in future videos. And there have been about half a dozen about it already. Following the Billy Joe Rubido principle of taking what you got and making what you need, I'm going to turn out these screws. So I can take that inside and cut it on my saw. Okay. One thing about this old heart pine is that it is splintery. So what I'm going to do is sand it and I'm also going to bevel this edge so when you put your legs over it uh, it'll be a smoother fit it's going to have paint on it and a couple of coats but uh, still uh, this will get rid of those splinters and make it more comfortable to sit on we're going to start with a coarse belt on our belt sander there We removed a fair amount of wood from our plank, which turns out to be about a number three grade wood. Uh, this was uh, the sapwood, the old southern pine. It still contains uh, some heart pine streaks, uh, and you can see one scar about midway, the plank that runs diagonal a little bit. Uh, I could grind that out, but that would take another 15 minutes, and I'm not going to bother with it. Uh, if you had a planer, yeah, uh, that would do it for just one pass, go zip, and that'd clean up your wood pretty good. But don't happen to have one. We're going to leave that as it is for the time. I'm going to put a coat of spar varnish on it, and then uh, set it in, and we'll proceed to paint the chair. I'm going to go ahead and pre-drill my holes. That's the longer screws I've got are pretty thick. And if I don't pre-drill them, I think they will almost undoubtedly uh, split that wood. Ex with some experimentation, we found that if we used this bit as a starter and then followed up with our pine with this larger bit that we could seat these large shank screws without splitting the wood which is of course what we want to do so we got one in and now we'll see if we can get the second one Okay. We'll call that one good. So now that we've got these two down, we can do the other two. Our Adirondack chair is structurally repaired. It still has painting to do. But let's give it a smoke test. It sits well. Feels solid. Yep, did good. Now, this $20 chair, what had happened to it? This back slat here uh, two of these boards on the back actually came down and touched the top of it and let water accumulate on top instead of running straight down the boards.
Consequently, that caused a weak spot and rot. And that's what caused this member to rot and fail. We know what happened to that and we corrected it. This one here was just merely split due to rough handling. And so we replaced it with a new solid piece of wood, as you saw. And what you haven't seen is that the original owner had the back piece, back of the back of the chair, split. And he replaced it with a piece of one by pine, and it was too thin for the job, and it would not support the weight. So it had split as well. So this has now been replaced with a 2x4 and longer and stronger screws. So uh, there's no reason to believe that this will not hold indefinitely. Now the other potential improvements are to put shoes on this thing out of harder wood. Well to do that I'm going to have to cut the wood from raw wood, uh, shape them so that they are uh, L-shaped pieces of wood. In short, a vertical piece that attaches to the plank that stands vertical, then a horizontal piece that the wood actually, that, ex that the existing wood will rest on, and then the shoe itself that actually will touch the ground. And this is going to take some time, uh, more time I, than I have to give to this project right now. So we will do it, but we will postpone that for another day. So now, what we have to do is paint this thing and let it dry. Here is the chair after I put a can of paint on it. Well, I ran out of paint, but uh, it's going in the woods anyway. It's good enough, and it'll do the job, and that's all we're interested in. And this is like Wednesday, and put it in the woods Friday. But now, this is Hovey Smith. Reminding you to hunt what you eat and eat what you hunt. Be legal, be ethical, be safe, goodbye, God bless, and see you next time. I have other videos where I've hunted deer and turkey at this location, as well as constructed two metal pole supported ground blinds. For more information on my books, blogs, and more than 850 videos, go to www.hoviesmith.com. To find out more about my business books, including a forthcoming audio book, Make Your Own Job Anytime, Anywhere, at Any Age, you can go to createyourownjobsecurity.com. Now, rebuilding and selling discarded furniture at this stage might be a job opportunity if you're at loose ends for cash and you've got something of a shop. I have six videos about building and shooting the replica 1777 French flintlock musket that I'm hunting with this year. To see how my novel, screenplay, and movie project is coming along, go to fatherthegrooms.net. Good hunting and good eating from the outdoors. Goodbye and God bless.